It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey everybody, today I'm taking a look at a small card game called Wind the Film. Wind the Film here is from the same designer and publisher as two other games I have right here. Coffee Roaster, a solitaire bag building game, and Take the A Chord, a clever trick taking game. Both of these games are great. I'm a big fan of both. I've kept both in my collection. And so I was hoping this was going to be good. I was thinking it should be good, but that would be 343 for this company. This one is much more traditional, I guess. It's a, a set collection game, but there are twists in it. So, what did I think of it? Does it continue this winning formula for the company? Let's find out. So here's what the game looks like set up in this case for three players. We've set out the display according to the setup card here, which is going to differ depending on the number of players. And as you can see, some cards are face up, some cards are face down. They are of varying colors, which are the different shots in the game, the different uh, film takes. And the idea here is to make sequences of these cards, collect them, play them, make sequences of them in front of you on the table to score the most victory points. We have the deck over here set up. We've put these here, which are bonus cards, five bonus points, if you get at least four cards of that kind. This is for two or three players. These would all be flipped over for four players, making it easier to accomplish. Only three cards, and then you would get the five bonus points. And then everyone has a hand of five cards that they have drawn in sequence and cannot shuffle. This is a big crux of this game. Your hand is uh, is set. You cannot mix these cards up. And so as you are drawing cards from this board, you're going to put them at the front of the hand here. And this is sort of a, a, a conveyor belt, if you will. You're going to put cards here at the front, and they will be played from the back of your hand, all right? And there's going to be a little bit of management you can do with this, but not too much. So you have to be careful the way that you play those. There is one color missing for uh, three players, which is right here. And the idea is they need to be done in sequence because otherwise the shots would be uh, would just not make sense. If you make too big of a jump, which is another main concept of the game, that is that when you play a card, let's say I play a four in front of me, the next card I play after that in this sh in this shot sequence in brown, right, has to be. It can start at any number, so four. It can go up or down after that, so I can play. Uh, ascending or descending, but it can only be as far away as three shots. More than that, the the idea won't make sense, and you have to in fact play that next card face down. All right. Uh, so that's ba that's the basic concept today. So how do you play? Your turn has three parts to it. So I'm going to play with this hand here. The three parts are the first thing I do is I choose my subject, which is draw cards. All right. So I'm going to pick from the display here, I can draw one, two, or three. And again, they're going to go in the sequence I drew them right here at the uh, front of my hand. When I choose to draw, I have to start in from one end of one of these lines and draw in that direction. And so I'm going to take a look at my hand here. I have a very high yellow card. Maybe I want to work on yellow, uh, even though I have this green one here. That's pretty good. I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw one card from here. If I draw one, I have to announce how many, up to three again, and I say I'm going to draw them this way. I draw this card, I put it right here. That's it for the choose the subject action. So phase one, done. Phase two, wind the film. Winding the film allows me to pick any one card except for the newest and move it up in my hand, meaning uh, get out of the way if you would, okay? So I'm going to do that, let's say, with, uh, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yellow card, okay? I'm going to take it and I can move it as far as I want up in the hand, even all the way to the front, which is what I'm going to do. And then lastly com comes uh, phase three, which is snap the shot, actually playing cards. And the way that works is you're going to play from the back of the hand, as many cards as you drew 
uh, at the beginning of the round. And so I'm gonna play one. I'm gonna play one in front of me. Uh, I'll just put it over here for now. And so that would be in my display. I've started working on that sequence. I have not defined yet, as I said, if it's gonna go up or down until the second card, is, until a second card is played, I, I will not know that. But I've started on it, okay? And that's it for me. And then at the end of the round, we would check if this display needs to be refilled. And that's gonna happen if I go down to three cards or fewer. Then we do a little rearranging here and draw more cards and refill this thing. Very simple, all right? So that's it, and now it would be this player's turn. Let's take a look at what I've got here. Um, all right, so this person is going to draw, oh, let's say they're gonna draw two, okay? And I'm gonna draw them from here going this way. I'll draw one, I'll draw two, then I can move a card, and I'm gonna move this nine right here right up against this eight right here, like so. And then I'm gonna play two because I drew two. And so this player's display, I'm gonna put this where it actually goes, this player's display would be one card there and one there. These colors are not combined, each line is its own sequence. Uh, if you ever have to play a card and you cannot because it's too far away, in this case, next time I play, this is gonna be fine. It's within distance, that's okay. But if instead of it being the five, it was the seven, it's so far away, it wouldn't make sense, right? It gets played face down, and next time I play there, I just have to continue going up or down, but the distance won't matter. It's possible you'll have to play face down again, though, if the next card would go the wrong way. Uh, but, you know, that that's basically, it's a little tricky, but hopefully that makes sense. You're going to continue until you hit a card in here that has been placed, uh, oh, near the bottom somewhere, that is called the Sunset card. This is Magic Hour card here, and this one's going to force everyone to play, uh, to, to basically bring their hand from five down to three by first winding the, the film if they want to, and then playing two cards without replenishing them, bringing them down to three. That also triggers the start of the end of the game and, until we keep going, and then next time we would refill games over, you play two more, and you are down to a single unplayed card, game's over, and we score. All right, how do we score? It's right here on the back of your handy dandy sheet here. This one tells you turn sequence, and on the back of that is scoring. And by the way, as I said earlier, if you ever qualify for one of these, you would just take it. However, not during sunset. If, if when you have to play the two cards for sunset, it would give you a bonus, you don't get it. And at the end of the game, when you play those final two cards, bringing you down to one card in hand, if then you would qualify for one of these good shot bonuses, you also don't get it. And anyway, the scoring is right here, as I said. And as you can see, depending on each color, you're going to score every color separately. So if you have no cards at all in one of the sequences, you are going to actually lose three points. So you definitely want to have every color covered at least by one card. And then the more cards you have, the better. So say you, you were able to get four cards in green, that's seven points. Below that is the good shot bonuses, those are five. Every card you play face down is negative two. And then there's an advanced rule that would let you pick a special color and uh, do some other stuff, which I'm not gonna go into, but they uh, remind you of it right here as well. So that's basically it. That should give you an idea of how the game works. That is Wind the Film. Let's go back up top and let me tell you what I thought of it. So there you have it. One thing that's uh, very neat here and is a tradition for the company so far is clever and interesting themes that do tie into the game's uh, mechanisms. And this one, yet again, has that vibe, this wind the film idea of moving the card up in your hand is clever and well implemented. So this one gets points for a, a, an original theme and one that does fit what you are doing in the game well enough that it's not jarring. I like that very much. The look is again similar to the other games, and again, I like that very much. And the gameplay, you know what? It's a lot simpler than the other two games, uh, and I don't like it as much as the other two games, the Coffee Roaster and Take the A Chord, but I do like it. This is neat. I, I enjoy set collection games, and this, the innovation here with the, the hand being rigid has been seen in other games, right? Famously, 
Bonanza does something like this, the trading game, the bean game, right? But this one takes that idea, puts it in a new concept, and these the Lost Cities-ish card play with the rigid hand gives you an interesting package. I really like it. There's a couple of things I don't like. I I thought there were maybe one or two more rules that needed to be there, like the fact that like the bonus cards, right? These bonus cards that you cannot win when it's sunset and at the end of the game, again, you can win. It just makes it one extra rule I have to teach that I wish wasn't, wasn't a thing, you know? But okay, that's not a really big deal. Other than that, this is neat. It's not revolutionary. And uh, I think it's going to perhaps it might be a little on the forgettable side if it gets a lot of play, you know, because it's going to play out very similarly from round to round, from game to game. But I very much enjoyed it. And so this one's going to get a seal of approval from me. If you're looking for something that's both traditional and quirky, Wine the Film could very much be the one. Look into it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.